one day they came and they knocked upon that door and they would not take no for an answer. Snowflake tried to close the door but they grabbed hold of her hand and on they danced. And she was quite pleased because as they danced, they were dancing closer and closer to the forest. And she thought to herself, in the darkest part of the forest, it will be cold and perhaps I can see some ice upon the ground. And still they danced forward on the And wars cost money. And he had a friend. And his friend knew how to celebrate Christmas better than any other man in this world. And his name was Seclegius. He was strong in his arm. He was handsome and tall. He had a son and a daughter. You'd never guess, you'd never guess that would be in Busters. <laughs> we were doing a stately home for head of the chimney he rose. He leapt to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and I saw him fly away like the down of a thistle, and I heard him exclaim, ere he went out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. and he stood there and he looked and he fell to his knees and he prayed and he begged for a miracle he stood there and he prayed he stood there and he hoped he stood there and for all his worth he wished for a miracle to happen and when he opened his eyes and he looked nothing was different and he looked and he thought that he had been deserted and here he staggered back and as he staggered back he touched against a sycamore tree that was behind him and as he touched it he touched a branch and as he looked upon that Christmas day he looked and where that sycamore tree had been there grew a long branch a branch that grew out and it started to have all of its leaves upon it and cherry blossom and as he looked at it it grew cherries in the middle of Christmas. And he looked and he gasped. Can you all gasp with me? <laughs> it was much louder than that, he gasped. And he could not believe his eyes and he looked. And it was heavy with all of the cherries and upon it. And he started to pull them. And he had not been recognised by King Arthur. And out he walked and who should he meet but the soldier he had met at the gate. Now old man, I think that you have seen our king. Please give me my reward, as you have been given by King Arthur himself. Seclegius looked and said, Are you sure? The soldier said, Yes. And here, in anticipation, he stood there and closed his eyes. Seclegius said to him again, Are you sure? And here's Seclegius. He took his staff and he raised it high in the air and he beat him once and twice and three times upon his head. Bigger and better and stronger and harder. And here the soldier ran away. Uh, my favourite was the other day, like a child said to me, he said, like, how old are you? And I said, how old do you think I am? And I said, well, I was born the year that the Queen was crowned. And he looked and he said, that's nearly dead. <laughs> When Tony said, uh, Tony said um, where, where do you think we're from? And what, and we, were, uh, we were in Yorkshire at the time, and then one lad said, Keithley. <laughs> well, Baboon. 
Babushka was a woman and she had a house by the edge of the village and everyone knew that she kept it cleaner than anyone else. She was proud of the fact that she had been a mother and a grandmother and she had the finest house in the village. And everyone would speak about how clean her house was. She would clean and polish and sweep and clean the windows. But one night as she sat by the side of a fire, everyone shouted, Babushka, Babushka, Babushka. You must look, for now there were goose feathers coming down from the sky. But in amongst them all there is a star. Now Babushka knew that if she went outside, I saw three ships come sailing in, come sailing in, come sailing in. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. I saw three ships come sailing in, come sailing in, come sailing in. food in the air and everyone was carrying fine things to go and see the people inside of the village and I went to the first door and it scrit scrat scrit scrat scritched upon the door and the door remained shut. The dog couldn't believe it because the dog could smell the fine food inside, could hear all of the people still dancing and singing and laughing and it pulled itself up and as it looked in through the window it looked and it could see there was a great... It is actually an instrument of mass distraction. And as she looked, she could see that there was something glittering and gleaming. And it was a bracelet that she could barely fit on the side of her hand. But give me a chance and I'll get it on there. And she didn't wait for a second. She placed it there and she admired how sweet that it looked. It was made of gold so, and it glistened and it... How could she have got this? How could she have got such a beautiful thing in the heart of winter and only going down when the snow falls deep and crisp and even upon the sand. <laughs> I'm listening. And she looked. And people would say, please tell us how you got this thing. And when the moon was in the sky, and high the moon, hey, I'm trying my best. And she looked. And as the moon was high in the sky, she tried to find a way of getting away from the same side of a Christmas story. It was story, almost as if a winter story. Okay, this is a story which comes from Norway. It's called Niels in the Forest. Now Niels lived in a house and he did not live by himself. He lived with his father and his two brothers. And every day when the snow would come down, he would go out and he would fetch the food, he would cook that food, he would wash the windows, he would keep everything clean inside of the house. And his brothers and his father did nothing. And one day he had had enough. And he decided that he would not stand for it anymore. And here he reached for a bow and his arrows and he started to run. And as he ran out of the house, he swore to himself he would never let his brothers and his father treat him in this way. And on and on he ran tune. Can you do the last one out of tune? Ready? Oh! And there you shall find something that will make you happy. And the king will not be pleased. So, 
He mounted upon the horse and rode it three times backwards up a stream. He turned around once and twice and three times and clapped his hands. Once and twice and three times. I'm so sure you're here. And he clapped his hands. You don't get out until you do this. He clapped his hands once and twice and three times. And then he looked and there stood the queen in front of him. He was surprised. She said, the king did not like it for Thank you. Thank you so much. We've had a we've had a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.